One of the campaigns that I was really involved with uh, was in the context of the 2016 UK EU referendum and it was called Another Europe is Possible and the purpose of the campaign was to make a progressive remain case. So uh, the campaign argued that there is a lot of problems with the EU and the European status quo but leaving the EU in the current context is only going to make things worse for migrants, for the environment, for workers. Um, and so this campaign was really important to me on a really personal level as an EU citizen living in the UK, but also it was a really good experience to learn about how different struggles intersect and, and how to organize across different struggles. I think when we think about transnational organizing, it's really important to bear in mind that this is not a phenomenon that has emerged in the internet age or in the age of social media. Um, so one of the groups and one of the movements that I find really inspiring is the Alter Globalization Movement um, that actually originated in the Global South and that then spread across the world um, around the 2000s in the form of World Social Forums. Uh, on the shared analysis that one of the problems we're facing today is neoliberal globalization and that's what we're struggling against. And I think a lot of the questions that, that were raised in the context of that movement are still relevant today. So I think it's still very inspiring to us today. Yeah, so my work is on ocean activism and trying to understand what it means to act politically at sea. And one of the books that has really inspired me in this context recently um, came out just this year in 2022. It's called A Blue New Deal by Chris Armstrong. I think there's three reasons why this book is really inspiring to transnational activists and why it was really inspiring to me. Um, when we think about the ocean, we often talk about environmental issues, acidification, pollution, sea level rise, global warming is related to this. Uh, and these are all really urgent issues. But what I like about uh, Chris Armstrong's book is that he connects that to the context of, uh, to the concept of global justice. Um, and he comes up with this term ocean justice. And what he means by that is that we need to think the ocean as an um, ecosystem in crisis alongside also the political economy of the ocean and the fact that the ocean is the foundation of the con contemporary ways in which we do trade. Fishing is a huge industry that we don't know much about. The ocean is also a huge resource frontier these days. Um, and these are all questions that, that we need to negotiate in a territory that is international. So the second reason I think why this is interesting for transnational activists is because here we have a territory that is by definition international. The high seas um, cover half of the planet's surface and this is territory that, as he argues in his book, our institutions fail to help us govern this and we have actually no means of governing this from below. So here we have a space where we can really reimagine what it means to act beyond the nation state in international territory, not just beyond national borders, but outside of national borders. And I think this is a really interesting question. And so the third reason why I think this is interesting is that there is actually really rich history of activism taking place at sea. So the sea, of course, is also a hugely racialized and colonial space, but across time we've seen a lot of anti-colonial and anti-racist uh, action there, including the Nuclear Free Pacific campaign, uh, including enslaved people jumping ships and capturing ships uh, during the Middle Passage, but also more recent campaigns like the anti-whaling campaign, which was hugely successful in the 1970s. And today we have groups like Ocean Rebellion, Women on Way, taking all sorts of struggle uh, to the sea and, and acting at sea. And I think there is a lot of potential here again for transnational activists to learn from this and to get inspired. Yes, yeah, so when I need courage, I like to think about the fact that we're not alone in this. In fact, there have been loads of people before us uh, and there are a lot of people across the world struggling on a variety of issues. Um, I mentioned already the all the globalization movement, but across history we can find a lot of movements that have struggled across borders for centuries, be it anti-colonial struggles, be it workers' struggles across borders, uh, be it the feminist struggle. And then today we have um, things like uh, the protesters in Iran, these kind of movements that I also find incredibly um, inspiring and, and where we can draw inspiration and courage from.